Good morning, class. Today we will start chapter twelve, data handling. So two topics that we will discuss today is classify data and construct a frequency table. After that, we will see how to represent the data in the form of graphical. So let's look at the first facts. All data that collect can be classified as a categorical data and numerical data. Last week, we already stated some of the example of the categorical data and numerical data. So this week, we will see what is the differences between them. First, categorical data is we measure the characteristics. So when we ask the questions and when we get back the answer as the data, they will give the characteristic as their answer, which means. Though answer cannot be measured by the numerical, but can be described. Like for example, when we ask the gender, we ask the flavored color or the flavored food. Okay, so when we ask the question like, "What is your flavored color?" the answer the given by the responder will be the describing or the characteristic. Okay, cannot be the answer. Cannot be. Cannot be the number as the answer. So when we talking about the numerical data, they are measure quantity. When we talk about the quantity, so they must be in the number. Like for example, the numbers of the book reads in a week. What is your height? What is your weight? Okay. Moreover, when after the numerical data, we actually got two type of the data under them. The first one is the discrete data. Discrete data they means they are measured in the whole number. What is that means? Which mean when I ask the questions, when you give the data or the number, your number must be in the whole number. Like for example, what is your numbers of the book read in a week? So you can say is four books, five books. Okay, you will give the whole number as a answer. What is the number of your family members? Three person, four person, six person. So they are is the whole unit. Seconds when we talking about the continuous data, they are measured on the continuous scale. When we talking about the scale, usually they are move more to the height or the weight or the price of the product. Like for example, what is your height? My height is. One hundred sixty-five point seven centimeter, which means the answer given there maybe is a decimal number. So that's what we call as the continuous scale. Okay, so I hope student can make it clear under these two types of the data. So last week actually I already give some of the question as the test. For classifying the data into the categorical and also the numerical, so this is the response. Okay, the number of the stamp for each student collect, hundred percent of you choose the answer numerical. Correct. Next, the time spent on the internet, hundred hundred percent of you choose the numerical answer, so it's a correct answer. Next, the ability to play the sepatacro is. Categorical, yes, the answer is correct. Flavor color, everyone choose categorical, yes, very good. The next one, the length of the earth one got two type of the choices here. Either is a categorical or the numerical. So, large of you, more of you choose the numerical. Actually, is a correct answer. The length means they are the panjang. Panjang cacing tanah. So actually, when you measure, they will given you the number or the centimeter as the answer. So it's a numerical. Annual income. Annual income here also is a numerical answer because when we talking about the income gaji, they always come with the numbers. The last one is the language spoken in the home. Okay, everyone got it right. This is a categorical answer. So I hope everyone can make it clear what are the questions that based on the categorical answer. What are the answer that based on the numerical answer? 
Next, state the most suitable method of the data collection for following situation. We got four kind of the data collection. Interview, survey, observation, and experiment. When we're talking about the interview, they are asking face to face or one by one or in a group like for example teacher teach in a class they're asking okay is it everyone clear for this question so i ask you to rise up your hand so this is also a kind of the response for the interview that i collect okay so for the interview usually they are have they got the open end questions open end question means fahamda so your answer may be very clear not so clear not understand at all so maybe got a lot of the answer they can be collected okay so survey means we put a question on the paper i distribute the paper you answer on the paper then i collect the paper so not only the paper to nowadays you can use email okay observation means you sit in one place after that you observe okay or in a long period you with someone then you observe like for example if this year is long enough for me to observe you so i can know which girl is doing well which girl is getting better but because this year because of the case covid 19 we no longer have the face to face classes so i have to say sorry because i cannot observe you 100% Okay, maybe I can observe you in only 50%. Some of the effort that you have shown, but you di I didn't observe it. So that's why, okay, you have to do all the online assessment that teacher given to you. Next is the experiment. Experiment, when we're talking about experiment, usually everyone think, oh, it's a science experiment doing in the lab. So actually, it's true also. Experiment means we are... Uh, deal with the chemical substance like for example i want to calculate the temperature of the liquid after i dissolve the liquid how fast can it dissolve okay what is the heat of this liquid what is the heat of this chemical when i pour this chemical liquid into another because do it change color so everything is about the experiment so back to our question here the favorite spot of the group of the students so when you're talking about the favorite spot there are the open end questions which mean you asking a respondent they can give you any kind of the spot they like isn't it for example i ask student a maybe they give me oh sepatakro i ask student b maybe they were giving me oh i like to play badminton when i asking the Student C, maybe they will say, Teacher, I like rope skipping. Is it a rope skipping a sport? But it's a sport activity. So I have to accept the questions. I have, okay, so in this condition, actually, interview is the most suitable method for the data collection. I hope students can make it very clear. Okay, next. Next is, if I want you to collect the data for the score obtained by the six football team in a football league age. so what is your method so girls for here if i want to collect the score score means matter ataupun maka untuk satu pertandingan ataupun untuk satu peperiksaan your last choice will be interview and survey you cannot obtain the marks by interview or survey it's very wrong because some of the respondent maybe can cheat their marks like for example you ask anyone oh how is your result oh my result is very good is it true very good so interview and the survey is your last choice so what is the suitable method for collecting the score for the six football team enam pasukan so our suitable method will be the observation which means you go inside the stadium you sit at the stadium there and then you watch the game and then you can obtain the score you can collect the score from them actually when we're talking about the 
uh, uh, competition, the observation is the only one method to collect the uh, data. Okay, so I hope everyone can understand how to perform the data uh, method of data collection here. Okay, now we move to the next point. After we classifying the data, after we collect all the data that we need, the next step is to organize the ungrouped data by constructing a frequency table. So here our focus will be the organize the ungrouped data by constructing a frequency table. Let's move to the classroom and then see what we can do in the classroom. Now we do a simple survey. Please tell me the number of your sibling. Okay girls, for here, survey here actually is the interview. Okay, it's a very simple interview. So which means face to ask the question that is I will need to know what is your number of the sibling. Then you just raise up your hand or you one by one by one you give me the answer. Okay, we will record on the board and construct a frequency table. So everyone give take turn to give me the number of the sibling. So this is the record that teacher already hear and record on the board. Okay, so what is our next step? What will you do with those record by constructing a frequency table? We see how. When we already collect the data and this data only involve the small amount of the respondent. Girl, listen carefully. Here only got 16 data which means 16% answer my question. Maybe that day the attendance only 16 person in one amana. So only 16 person answer my question. All these things I can just record in a row. And here we call them as a ungrouped data or unprocessed raw data. Okay. When we the first time when we get back our data, actually all of them is ungrouped. Like for example, I give the survey. I put on a paper, you just tick whatever you want based on the questions. Then after that, I collect back. Actually, there are the ungrouped data. Okay, some of you answer boleh, some of you answer tak boleh, some of you answer suka, some of you answer tak suka. So I have to analyze the data one by one. So all of them actually is a, a scramble data. Okay, so what we will do based on this ungrouped data, to construct a frequency table, a tally must be done. What is meant by tally? This is a frequency table. Frequency table actually got two row. is the most important. The first one is the title. Now the title is the number of a sibling. The second will be the frequency. But because due to this is the ungrouped data, that's why tally have to do first. Okay move to the first one number of the sibling how i know i have to put one two three four five based on the ungrouped data when you get your ungrouped data you have to search the smallest number and the biggest number my smallest number will be the one biggest number will be the five that's why i didn't have to put until the six i just put one two three four five the next one is the tally Tally means you count the number that involve how many times they involve here. Like for example, one sibling, which means they are the only one child in the family. I got two person in there is one sibling, which means one or anak tunggal in the family. So put the tally one two in the frequency. You put the number two. Next is two sibling four of them is two so put the tally four and put the number frequency four same thing happened to three three now we're counting who got three sibling one two three four five six if i got six the way to write the tally is different you put the five number which mean five in a group and then you put the one in another new group okay the way to put the tally i think you already learned in the primary school 
but do you know the importance to put the tali in the group which when I already process all my ungrouped data when I want to calculate the frequency I can easily calculate them if imagine you put all of them in the row 1 2 3 4 5 6 so after all you have to count back 1 2 3 4 5 6 here then you can put the number 6 if I already put them 5 in a group Okay, and I just have to look at the tally. After that, I can easily calculate. Okay, five, one, six. Okay, so please remember this. Okay, four and five will do in the same way. So after all, you process the data. Then this is how you put them into the frequency table. Okay, everyone clear? After we have the frequency table, how do you construct a data representation? Okay girls, the data can show in the form of the table but can also represent graphically to make it easier to read and understand. Everyone got different type of the interpreting of the data. When I give you the table, maybe you need more time to read on it, then only you will know oh, which one is the highest, which one is the lowest. Okay, for some, uh, for some of the people that cannot understand the data in the form of the table, that's why we represent them in the graphically. Okay, just like every day we got the active case the number of the active case of the COVID-19 we got two types of the data being given one is in the table one is in the graphical okay do you notice it okay so everyone can choose their own way to understand what will happen in the Malaysia here okay so the suitability of the data representation depends on the type of the data collected and the purpose of the accuring the information. So we actually got five types of the data representation here. What are the type that I have to use for my data is depends and what is the purpose upper to join here? You have to show your information. So we got five type means we get the bar chart, pie chart line graph dot plot and the last one will be my stem and leaf plot so in this video we will discuss for the bar chart first bar chart is very common you can see it everywhere we got two types of the bar chart one is the vertically one is the horizontal so what is the use of the bar chart bar chart usually is the type of the data representation which represent the data by using the bar and is suitable for showing the comparison between characteristic. If you want to show the comparison between the characteristic, like for example, in uh, satu amana, in satu berdikari, in satu cekal, okay, we got uh, subject BM, BI, maths, subject BM, BM, maths to compare. So you can show it in using the bar chart. It's very clear for us. Okay, like we can see. For example, I'm using here, if imagine here, category 1, I put 1A, 1B, 1C. The blue bar is the BM, orange will be the BI, and grey will be the mats. So you can see, among these three, the class 1 Amana got the highest score for the BM. Among these three, 1B got the highest score for the BI. Among these three, Satu C got the highest score of the mathematic, highest score for mathematic compared to them. Okay, and then we also can see in a group here, like for example, one A, which subject got the higher achievement or B A M, which subject got the highest achievement B I, which subject got the highest achievement B M also. Okay, so you can compare one by one between the category or between the uh, subject that you want to compare so it's very clear for us to see okay so how to construct a bar chart now we see what is the element they need by the bar chart this is a very simple bar chart okay the first one is you have to know what is your vertical axis okay vertical axis our vertical axis usually will involve the number 
and then you must choose a suitable scale. Like for example, just now the number of the sibling, okay, I will choose one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so what are the spacing here that you have to put them? Okay, so that one you have to see what, how much large of the space they were given for you to construct your graph. Okay, but for the syllabus form one, you didn't use the real graph paper. On the questions, they already have the have the grid, so you just use calculate the numbers of the grid involved. Then after that, you just construct your graph. The next one will be the horizontal axis. Horizontal axis usually they have involved the category. Like here, the category is the way to come to school. So maybe will be the bus, car, bike, van, and walking. So here you have to write what are the things involved. Okay, here they didn't write. Next one will be your title. The title is based on the questions or based on the soalan given. So you just put them in the middle and on the top of your graph. The last one will be the bar. This we call them as a bar. So two things you have to know before you construct your bar. The first one, the weight of each bar must be uniform. Uniform means standard. Okay, so which means you have to make sure the weight of each bar is the same things. Okay, you cannot have this is a large bar. This is a small bar. Cannot. Okay, and then each bar must be evenly spaced. You can see the spacing here. Okay, so you must evenly space. Okay, if you space here is a two grid. Okay, dual beta. So here also must be involved dual beta here. Okay, so you can see what are the examples showing. Okay, more example here. This is a title. The number of the students based on the races in one classes. So this is the vertical axis. Horizontal axis. So here horizontal showing the good example. Every category you have to write below the bar, and then all the bar will be standard wide, okay. And all the spacing between the bar will also evenly spacing. So the numbers chosen here usually you are using the multiple means the cifre cifre. Okay, so you have to look at your ungrouped data, and then you have to choose the multiples of the numbers that suitable for your bar chart. Okay, so girls, because we have no longer face to face learning classes. Okay, ah,、uh, for this week until the end of the school, we have to discuss all the topic online. So this is. The top ten tips for the study skill that the teacher managed to share to you. Okay, you have to study for your own. That's why you have to know what are the study skill involved. Okay, the first thing you have to find the best study method for you. Okay, what is mean the study method? Study method means some of the students they can only study alone. Okay, they cannot have the friends beside them. Okay, chit chat, chit chat, chit chat. Then. She cannot study. Some of the friends need a lot of the friends to study together, so they got the motivate to study. Okay, so this one actually you can choose by your own. You can create your own group by using the WhatsApp group, or you schedule the meet, the Google Meet thing. Okay, together in like in one week, one time, one hour. We meet and then we discuss whatever subject that we have, ah,、uh, discuss for that that ah、uh, that week, okay. Or some of the students, when she study, she like to hold a pen, or hold the highlighter in the hand, because she like to ah、uh, jot down here, write to write things, okay. Rewrite, tulis semula akan buatkan pengingatan dia lebih bermendalam, okay. That's why you have to find what is your studies method. Next one, you have to eat well. This one, I hope everyone will do it. Exercise regularly. Okay, although we stay at home, we have to exercise also. So you can look at your YouTube. A lot of the four minute, five minute exercise. So just follow it. Stay positive, girls. Stay positive. 
Okay, I don't know what you think, but I think the students listen after listen the announcement from the KPM, she would feel very happy for it because don't have to go to school anymore. And then for you girls, you are form one this year, form two next year, form two next year according to the KPM, they stay until March. You also have to stay at home for your online classes. Is it very happy? I don't know, but please stay positive. Motivate yourself every moment when you go to the online classes. Okay, stay positive. You cannot say, "Allah tak yalah belajar sudah macam ni kan." It's not the dunia kiamat for you. Okay, it's not the end of the world for you. Okay, you still have your future to go. Okay, so please stay positive. Number five, get enough sleep. Take a break if you already tension with all the study. Because the teacher is no longer assist you, and then maybe your parents have to work. You have to do a lot of the housework. You have to help your mother to do a lot of housework. You have to cook, also even have to cook. So you take a break. You just join the classes when we can, because after that you can do your homework. Okay, please remember. Yes, teacher cannot assist you, but teacher also cannot force you to pass up the work. But please don't take this as an excuse. Oh, I don't have to do my homework because teacher no longer ask me to pass up the homework. Please also don't go so extreme. Okay, jangan pergi terlalu jauh. Okay, if you feel very tension, just take a break. Uh, set the goal. Although we don't have the exam, but you also have to set the goal. Like for example, for me, for I as your teacher, I set the goal. Okay, I will use the online class very wisely. I will finish all my syllabus for form one. Then after that, I will do some revision for you. I hope this will help you to master all the skill that you need for your form one. This is my goal. What is yours? Number eight, find the best studying time for you. Some of the girls she cannot study after eat because mengantuk. Up to you, okay. Some of the girls like reading while eating because it's already in the home, isn't it? Okay, here look at my video here eating the potato chips. Okay, also this is what is your best studying time. Some of the girls she like night, okay, tengah malam. Some of the girls she like daytime, but it's very very early in the morning, five a.m., four a.m. Girls, it's up to you also, because you no longer have to go to school, isn't it? So please find your best study time. Okay, exam can be good. Ah, uh, very good news. We don't have the final exam, so I just have. The sum of the online assessment for you, if I can make it. So this is only the assessment for you. But please remember your PTT girl. Okay, the last one you can sleep on it. Kalau sudah mengantuk pergi tidur je lah. If you already feel tired, you just sleep on it. You don't have to force yourself. Cannot, cannot. I have to finish this one. Finish this one today also. No need. Okay, you just had to relax and then you. Can learn more better after you refresh yourself. Okay, I hope you enjoy this video. That's all for today. Thank you.